What's up, guys? Charlie here. You know my sister, Kirby. Hey, guys. Today, we're hanging out in Jackson, New Jersey at a theme park. Because nothing gets us more jacked up than talking about science and experiencing more G-forces than an astronaut during takeoff. It's time for Weird But True. We're so glad you're here, because Kirby and I have a confession. We have no shame in admitting it. We're generally open-minded. Fearless. Willing to try new things. But there's one thing we just can't handle. Roller coasters. Charles is a pretty strong guy. He can eat weird things, ride in a boat in the ocean, and even fly in a helicopter. No problem. But for Charlie, a ride on a roller coaster is a surefire way for him to end up tossing his cookies, if you know what I mean. And Kirby is pretty all-around fearless. She can train huge, vicious birds of prey, handle all sorts of scary insects, and swim with sharks, no problem. But when it comes to riding roller coasters, she's filled with absolute terror. Now it's time for things to change. I'm done being scared. I'm tired of getting sick. So today, we're unraveling the world of... Roller coasters! All right, guys, let's get to know what we're working with here. Roller coasters. They come in a bunch of different varieties to please every sort of coaster lover. Or coaster phobic. Or coaster thrower upper. Let's check them out. Good morning, madame. Welcome to the Roller Coaster Cafe. My name is Charlie. How may I help you today? Mm, do you have any suggestions? For first timers, I would suggest a wooden roller coaster. Oh, simply a classic. What kind of steel coasters do you have? We offer a variety of specials today, including the inverted roller coaster, the flying roller coaster, and the fourth dimension roller coaster, where riders are on either side of the track and their seats whip around on their own axis. Hmm, nothing's really catching my eye. Roller coasters kind of freak me out. No worries, madame, they make me sick to my stomach. So many different roller coasters to avoid. So many different ways to throw up. Until now. So I did some research and I found out that you, my friend, get motion sickness. Yeah, that sounds about right. So scientists aren't really sure why people get motion sickness, but the current accepted explanation is the sensory conflict theory. All right, here's the deal. Your brain uses a bunch of different things to keep track of your environment. And the two big ones are the vestibular system and your ear, which keeps track of your body's movement and your vision, which is a bit more self-explanatory. And the two, most of the time, work quite nicely together. When I look up, I see the sky. When I look down, I see the ground. But in very unfamiliar situations, like on a roller coaster, you might get some conflicting information. And when there's a conflict between those signals, your brain gets confused. So the natural response for people like Charlie is the complete expulsion of one's stomach contents, AKA launching the food shuttle, AKA blowing your beets, AKA tossing your tacos. But there's a potential solution. It was developed during the training of US Navy flyers, conditioning. 95% of aviator trainees got over motion sickness by familiarizing themselves with the speed and motion of the jets, and then flying over and over and over until they know what to expect. So Charles, if we're gonna nip this thing in the bud, there's only one place to go. A theme park! We hopped over to Jackson, New Jersey. This is the place to tackle our fear of coasters because it's home to the tallest and fastest roller coaster in North America, King Ka. Weird but true, guys, Kinda Ka is 456 feet tall. That's like if you took three Statue of Liberties and stacked them all right on top of each other. Super tall. I don't know, Curb. What's up? I think we bit off a little more than we could chew here. You good? I'm feeling... Uh-oh. Feeling a little... It's okay, Charles. Let's snap back to headquarters for a deep breath. All right, Charles, deep breaths. I know the park is gonna take some getting used to, so we're gonna be hopping back and forth all day to really ease into it. I don't know about this curve. Don't worry, I got you. We're gonna help you master the movement and motion of roller coasters, just like the US Navy Flyers and their jets, so that when you do finally ride, you'll know what to expect. And I'm gonna break it down into a language that you understand. 
physics. Naturally. Understand the physics, understand the movement. Food will remain inside my body. You got it. Why don't you help me kick things off back at the park? We got a weird but true fact for you. All roller coasters don't have motors. They don't even have engines propelling them forward. They don't need them, but they can still run because they're all based on one simple physics principle, the law of conservation of energy. Here's how the roller coaster system works. The whole system has a certain amount of energy. Throughout the ride, some energy is lost to things like friction and air resistance. The energy that is in the system at any one time is in two forms, kinetic energy, the energy of speed, and potential energy, the energy of height. The faster something moves, the more kinetic energy it has. The higher something is off the ground, the more potential energy it has. So a super key part of the roller coaster system is that initial input of energy that the roller coaster uses up over the course of the ride. So there are two ways of doing this in the roller coaster world. Classic roller coasters have massive hills that lift, drag them all the way up to the top. As the chain lift drags a roller coaster up the hill, it's adding potential energy into the system that the coaster uses up throughout the ride on the way back down. More modern roller coasters don't use lifts. They have launch tracks. The launch tracks speed up the cars really quickly, adding a bunch of kinetic energy into the system right off the bat to make it fast. After launch, the system has stored enough energy to last throughout the entire ride, and it's converted between the two main forms, potential and kinetic. This is also why, if you check it out, the tallest hill on a roller coaster is always gonna be the first that you go over, because the system is constantly losing energy in order for it all to work. Every other hill has to be shorter than the first. Now you're getting it, Charlie. A track like this will work because even though it's losing energy, the roller coaster car has enough to travel over those hills. But a track like this will not work because the car doesn't have enough energy to climb higher than the point where it starts. So here's a great example of it all in action. El Toro, the wooden coaster behind us. So first, the system has no energy when it's at rest during the boarding process. And then when the coaster is brought over that first hill by its lift system, that lift system is bringing energy to the whole thing. At the top of the first hill, it's at its maximum potential energy. And that's converted from potential to kinetic as it goes down, speeding up and slowing down, up and down hills. And throughout the entire ride, the system is losing energy because of air resistance and friction. And the whole thing eventually comes to a slow stop. And the ride's over. Roller coaster physics. Welcome back, ride. That's how we your ride. How you feeling, bud? I'm feeling very prepared. You know what that means? It's game time. Just like the US Aviator trainee, we just gotta jump right in. Let's do it. Now that I understand the physics better, I wanna put my stomach to the test. Here goes nothing. Oh, buddy! Oh, 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 Wasn't so bad the second time. Let's see how I do on another. And another! And another! When will it end? Oh my gosh! Okay? That was great! No throwing up? No throwing up! Way to go, man. I knew you conquered your motion sickness. All right, guys, we gotta take a quick break, but when we come back, it's time for Kirby to tackle the roller coasters. Wait, what? Weird but true, a roller coaster in the United Arab Emirates can reach 149 miles an hour. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Today, Kirby and I are helping each other treat our roller coaster-related ailments. 
I just got over my motion sickness, so now I'm good to go. That's great, Charles, but I still have an issue. Oh, yes, Kirby, so tell me, what scares you specifically about roller coasters? Um, everything. Could you be a bit more specific? Sure, well, I'm going about a million miles an hour, and I'm in a metal box on a track made of sticks, and I don't know the last time the thing's been inspected, mm. or if I'm gonna hit a bird, or if it's gonna mm. break down. Loop-de-loops make no logical sense to me. I'm sure to fall out, and the worst part is, at the tops of the hills, it feels like I'm gonna fly out of my seats, and at the bottom of the hills, it feels like my heart is being crushed by my chest. Well, Kirby, it looks like we have a lot to unravel here. We got a lot to unravel. Let's start with the basics. Roller coaster safety is not something that you should spend too much time worrying about. Before anyone gets on one of these things, safety experts have to check off a long list of standards from a variety of organizations with fancy names. And Kirby, these people, they check for everything. They perform accelerometer tests, check slope height limits, and perform daily inspections. And on top of that, every ride is tested multiple times a day. Maintenance personnel literally walk along the track looking for anything that might be wrong. Okay, okay, okay. I guess that's not something I should be too worried about. But what about the whole loop de loop and flying out of my seat thing? It's also not an issue. I'll tell you what I mean back at the park. All of the forces we experience on roller coasters that press us back into our chairs or lift us up in the air. They're forces we experience due to the acceleration of our bodies. Another name for them is G-forces. That's what you're feeling, Kirby, G-forces. Well, G-forces scare the heck out of me. To understand G-forces, we need to understand inertia. Cool science word, inertia. Inertia is the idea that an object tends to resist any change in motion unless another force acts upon it. Imagine you're flying down a hill on a roller coaster. At the bottom of the hill, the roller coaster follows the tracks and goes straight, but your body's inertia wants to keep heading in that downward direction. The result, the body presses hard against that seat. Those forces pressing you against your seat, those are positive G-forces. During everyday moments, we live at 1G, but on roller coasters, we might experience moments of 2 or 3Gs, and our bodies feel a lot heavier too. If you weigh 100 pounds at 1G, at 3Gs, your body will feel like it weighs 300 pounds, so it's much harder to raise our arms and move around. So at the bottom of the hills, we feel like we're being pressed into our seats, but at the top of the hills, the opposite happens. Our bodies want to keep going upward, but the roller coaster isn't going upward anymore. So the G-forces are pulling us up from our seats this time. Those forces lifting us off our seat are negative G-forces, but they're very helpful. G-forces and inertia are the very reasons why we don't have to worry about falling out of our seats on loop-de-loops. While riding a loop-de-loop, -loop, we're constantly experiencing a G-force that's pressing us into our seats throughout the whole loop. According to physics, it's practically impossible to fall out of one of these bad boys. Let's try a little roll reversal here, Kirby, and you explain it to me back at the park. Okay, as long as I'm not the one on the coaster. So as Charlie rides this ride right here, he experiences positive Gs when he's going up those hills, being pressed into the back of his seat. When he's zooming down the hill, he experiences negative Gs, which are moments of weightlessness. Positive Gs, negative Gs. Yeah, Kirby did it! Oh, sorry, it's wet. So, um, wonderful job. I mean, I know these things aren't gonna break down and that my risk of injury is pretty small and that I'm not gonna go flying out of my seat on a loop-de-loop, -loop, so I feel like I'm ready to give it a go. To prove that you are finally cured of your roller coaster ailments, you must finally ride a roller coaster. Yay, let's do this. We're walking up to the Harley Quinn crazy train. It's tiny but mighty. Kirby couldn't take it. Take it. You had to go for the Harley Quinn. Don't need to be talking smack. The Harley Quinn was serious. Victory to Charlie right here. No way. Victory to the curb. Time to try a coaster together. Hey, it looks 
looks like we're cured. We can ride anything. Anything? There she is, Curb. I don't know. We can't claim victory over our fears until we take the ultimate ride. Kingda Ka. Wow. Weird but true, an early version of the roller coaster was built out of ice. King Ka. Oh, she's incredible. Why, thank you. Who are you? I'm Michael. I'm one of the engineers. You helped make this beast? I, along with a few other people. Uh, you guys look a little nervous. What are you talking about? We're not nervous? Yeah, you're nervous. Yeah. But I can help with that. I'll show you some things. Come on. All right. This guy's got the coolest job ever. Michael's an engineer that designs and builds roller coasters. His favorite weird but true fact, the first roller coaster to go upside down was designed in 1840. Describe the situation. What are we looking at right now? All right, so this train is coming out of the station. Yeah. It is going to the launch position. And when it stops, it connects up to what we call the catch car. Okay. okay. That catch car will push the train right down that track. Zero to 128 miles an hour in 3.5 seconds. Right. Here it comes. Whoa! And in 10 seconds, wow. you are all the way at the top, 456 feet. And then it's pure free fall as you come down. And then you come up over this big hill right here, and you hit a bunch of brakes that you'll see up on the top of the hill coming down. That takes out all the energy. Looking at this, my heart is in my throat. I'm like genuinely kind of That makes out me right happy. Now. Like, I love when people are scared to get on a ride, but then they, they still get on anyway. Well, can you tell us? Make us feel better about this. Yeah, I can show you how it all works. First of all, the ride is controlled by a programmable logic controller. It's PLC is what we call those. And the PLCs monitor everything that's going on in the ride at once. Anytime it senses that there's a problem or there's something fails to function the way it should, it shuts the ride down in a safe mode. So for a ride as tall as King Ka, you're building up a lot of energy, but it stops so quickly. How does that happen? King Ka utilizes a principle in physics called Lenz's Law, and it involves magnetic fields and non-ferrous materials. Cool science word, non-ferrous metals. They're metals that can't be magnetized, like stainless steel, copper, and aluminum. So to give you an example, I brought along a little copper tube, and here in my back pocket I have super high strength magnets. Now if I just drop these magnets, they fall just like anything else does because of gravity. However, if I drop these magnets inside this tube, what? <laughs> there it comes out the bottom, right? Here's how Lenz's Law works. The copper tube represents the brake plates on a roller coaster track. The super strong magnets represent the magnets mounted on roller coasters. When the magnet with a magnetic field travels through the copper tubes, it produces small electric currents in the tube. Those currents produce their own magnetic field that repels the magnetic field of the magnet, slowing it down. The result, the roller coaster slows down nice and smooth. Physics for the win. All right, so we got the braking system down, but I feel like we need a huge input of energy right off the bat to go zooming down that launch track. To explain that, I'm gonna take you to the pump room. It's a lot easier. Here we go. Michael, this right. is huge. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> What's okay. going on? So, because King Ka is different than a traditional roller coaster, it doesn't drag you to the top of the hill and let you go, it launches you. Those pumps will push the fluid into that long cylinder. As the pumps push the fluid into the cylinder, the nitrogen compresses. It's like a super soaker okay. that's, that's waiting for the trigger to be pulled. And when they launch the train, a valve opens up and it releases the fluid and it's explosive. I mean, it comes out of there fast. All right, guys, that's enough talking. I think it's time for us to get on this ride. Aye, aye, aye. You ready for this? Oh, my God. It's Are time. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Just breathe, Charles. Breathe, breathe. Guys, it's time to conquer the car. Let's do it. Conquered the car! Oh, we did it! Woo! Yeah. 
The world is a blur when it goes past you. You can't even you see nothing. It's gone. The world is gone. All right, we're with you guys on King De Ka. Riders experience a moment of weightlessness. I'm here to tell you, I felt it. So thanks so much, man. We had a blast. Of course. Thank you. you guys that came. Was, so was awesome. Fun. All right, guys, we're gonna hop over to HQ. We'll see you there in a few minutes. See you soon. Weird but true, the world record for longest marathon on a roller coaster is 405 hours and 40 minutes. That's almost 17 straight days. Hey guys, welcome back. I am so fired up right now. We just rode the tallest and fastest roller coaster in North America. Way to go, Charles, you didn't vomit. Acclimation and conditioning, I just had to get used to it. And you didn't seem scared at all. Embrace the G-forces. You're not falling out of those loop-de-loops. Well, Curb, I got you something to remember this day. No way, I got you something too. An official trophy to prove you've gotten over your coaster phobia. An official trophy to prove you've gotten over your motion sickness. Hooray! Hooray! What else did we learn today? There are so many weird but true things. Roller coasters don't have motors to propel them. The highest hill on a roller coaster ride is always the first one. Magnets can slow a roller coaster when they come into contact with non-ferrous metals such as copper. <laughs> going on here, Charles? Ah, uh, perfect, Curb, take these. Okay, why? So you know how we mastered roller coasters, right? I feel like it's time for something a bit more extreme, and fighter pilots experience like nine Gs during flight. Got it, a little bit of conditioning before the real jets. You got it, Curb, ignition on! All right, guys, thanks so much for coming by today. It looks like we got a new project on our hands. Thanks for coming by. Come by again when we discover more things that are weird but true. We'll see you later. Hit it, Curve! <laughs>